we're on the road again and we are getting ready to uh we stopped at our favorite place cedar coffee in two harbors cheers, cheers. um and we're on our way to grand marais to hike the border route trail which is a 65 mile or 60 i think it's about that it's about 65 miles give or take a few um uh, along the Canadian border. It uh, starts or ends, depending on which way you go, at the northern terminus, the Superior Hiking Trail. And we're looking forward to, um, to hiking it over the next few days. One of the things we are most excited about, besides hiking this most epic trail, is actually getting to ride the shuttle with Harriet. It's gonna be so fun. And uh, so yeah, we're on our way. We'll keep you posted. Uh, stay with us, as they say. Time to pick up our permit at the ranger station. We just got our permit and we are ready to roll. Number one, I don't care about it. Number two, it's not negotiable. Number three, don't be greedy, share with this old human child. <laughs> and number four, you're dead. Right there, there are the rules. Original. You know, signed from at least 20 years ago. It's awesome. Well, Harriet just dropped us off and she was absolutely delightful and we're getting ready to start the trail now. We just came out of the woods and found Gunflint Lake. This area has lots of wonderful resorts and an established road. Uh, we're going to hop back on the trail and uh, look for a good place to have lunch. This is what the trail looks like. We call that fern surfing. This is the trail. More fern surfing. <laughs> you know you're going the right way because there's a slight dent in the ferns, but other than that, it's kind of hard to see. But it's beautiful. We found a great little unmarked campsite for lunch. It's a beautiful view of this pond with lots of places to sit that are almost perfect. But not quite. You have to pick the perfect rock. I think I figured out why so many through hikers have these foam pads. Because when you stop for lunch, you can just lay down, like even on wet rocks, and be cool and take a nice break. So this piece of gear is new for me on this trip and it probably isn't very helpful when it's cold out, but it's really great so far. There's the lake. Whew, we just walked up a big hill to this spot called the Mid Cliff Overlook. I don't think it's actually on the BRT map, but it's beautiful. A couple of picnic benches up here. Good place to get a drink of water after that big hill. It was 1.6 miles of steady uphill with 350 feet of elevation gain. Yeah. Oof. I think we're gonna have a lot more of that on this yes. hike. Whoa, big rock. We just arrived at Loon Lake campsite. It's about a three quarters of a mile spur in. And uh, it looks absolutely beautiful. There's a good tent spot, fire ring, another tent spot, maybe one over there. Check out this campsite setup. Woo! This is such a great campsite. And then you go down here and you get your water and you can go swimming. Oh, this is so nice. Whew, Loon Lake.
Well, good morning. It is day two and we are just leaving Loon Lake campsite. We, uh, this is a beautiful campsite. We enjoyed staying here last night. That's the view of the campsite. And right here is the lake. Absolutely beautiful. Um, had a great night here and we're getting a relatively early start and gonna head out uh, east towards, I think we're headed to either Partridge Lake or we might stop a little sooner, uh, heading through uh, Bridal Falls, which is a highlight of the trip. And yeah, 14 to 16 miles today and only, I don't know, a whole bunch to go. See you soon. Here's another view of Loon Lake, and I see a seaplane out there. I don't know if I can zoom in or not, if you can see it too. There's a seaplane, which is pretty cool. And so this lake must be long enough that you can take off and land on a seaplane. Super cool. We did that when we went to Isle Royale, and uh, it was really cool to take off and land on Double Track Lake. Um, and I got a couple videos on that if you want to check it out, our Isle Royale video. And then I also have a Superior Hiking Trail video where we took the Isle Royale seaplane for a ride that day. So you can check that out on my YouTube if you want. Um, but yeah, we're going to get going back on the trail. Well, we're back on the BRT. We had some nice overlooks. We uh, took the Bryce Brion Trail, um, mostly because it was just convenient not backtracking. It's a spur that was connected to the campsite that we stayed on on Loon Lake. It did have some nice views of the lake. so. We opted to stay on that trail and connect up here. And uh, this is really some good hiking. Here's an overlook of Gunflint Lake. Tomorrow will be the day of overlooks. Lots of overlooks tomorrow, but this is pretty cool. Welcome to Thimbleberry Heaven. This is actually the trail I'm standing on. And check it out. There's actually some thimbleberries. Oh, wait, my bug net. Our bugs are a little bit um, intense around here. But look at this trail, like how would you, yeah, that's where we go. Here we are, hiking through the thimbleberries. I think we call this thimbleberry surfing, like fern surfing. Whoa! <laughs> you have to watch you walking. It's a little brushy in this spot. It's not up to forest service standards. Is that what is that what you said, goat? Yeah. Whoa, man, oi! Bridal Falls. This is where we get to have lunch today. peek at our lunch at Bridal Falls. Uh, I'm having Fritos with peanut butter, butter, and honey. And there's the falls right behind us. We're just perched on a little rock here drying out and uh, getting some more water and hydrating before we hop on the next leg of the trail. We're back on the trail and on our way to Sock Lake. I wonder if it really looks like a sock. Farewell Gunflint Lake. That was a climb. Still got more to go. There's a trail. Can you see it? There it is. That's the trail right there. Okay. We're feeling pretty beat up after all of the bugs and the bushwhacking uh, east of Crab Lake is just thick trying to push through. And uh, I lost track of how many times I twisted my ankle or fell or bumped my head or <laughs> so this definitely felt like off-roading so we're going to take a little break here at Topper Lake and uh, see what comes next. There's some mud over there and it took my shoe off but good thing my gator kept it on. Um, <laughs> Oh man, I gotta fix this. Like, I don't know how many miles of this we've had, but this is pretty brushy in this section. Not our favorite, but at least we're not climbing through trees. 
And we are very thankful for all the volunteers who do all the trail work here. But this is, this is slow hiking through here. Whew. It was all of that yucky, arduous brush worth walking through. Yes, we found an overlook. Whew. Oh, look at that view. Miles and miles and miles and miles Canada. and miles. That's Canada? Yep. Oh, <laughs> um, I forgot. That's Canada. Boop. Hi, Canada. You look so beautiful today. And that's a long way down. Oh, man. That's Canada. This is the spur down to Partridge Lake, and uh, there was a 2018 storm that ripped through here. You see these trees are twisted, and it was impassable. We're hoping that uh, the trail maintenance makes it passable for us, but oof, what a mess. Look at all these trees that were taken out. Phew, the spur down to Partridge Lake was no fun at all. <laughs> Kind of treacherous. I fell in the beaver dam. Um, I'm washing off my shoes right now. Um, but this looks absolutely lovely and we're looking forward to relaxing and having some dinner. Here's the foot wash. In here. Man, that was some mucky beaver muck. Day three. Here's the sunrise over Partridge Lake. And the mosquitoes. Buzzing. This place is, um, feels a little swampy. I would not say this is our favorite campsite, but it has its beauty. But it was pretty rough to get here. If you have another place that you would rather stay, I highly recommend that. <laughs> but if you need to stay here due to mileage, then you can do that too. Here's a little look at our campsite. The goat is over here. Getting her breakfast ready. And there's a, uh, this is out on a little point so you can get out on the lake on the other side. And uh, lots of pine trees. Not any great hammock spots that we can see, but um, and the tent sites are a little small and kind of rocky and on hills, but you'll find a spot. But check out that sunrise view. It makes it all worth it. We're putting our shoes on. And they are pretty wet and dirty and gross. <laughs> and, uh, um, what you got in there, goat? Slug. It's <laughs> <laughs> so gross. <laughs> this is not our favorite spur. <laughs> It's now that it's rain it rained last night, we're oh ankle deep mud some places and dunking dunking under trees and trying not to poke our eyes out and it's very uh yeah, just technical. You just have to be in the right frame of mind for it. So we're gonna keep going up the hill. Here we have Rose Cliffs and another outlook overlook. That is right by the one we are just at. Look at that misty, beautiful view. Hi, Hi Canada! Canada. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do when Canada's right there? I mean... Wave. Say hi. Hello, moose. Hello, beavers. Hello, anyone camping. Hello, nature. It's beautiful. Right behind us is Rose Cliffs, uh, iconic view of uh, this trail. And this is, our, I think this is actually our first overlook. And so we have 11 more to go today. We're on deck to do 15 miles today and we've got about 14 more. <laughs> we have to stay on track though. If we stop at every overlook, it's gonna take us 
uh, 20 hours dying today, but we've been doing pretty good. To hit today, we might roll into camp a little later because we have so many beautiful stops. But uh, yeah, we're planning on doing 15 miles through this stretch and hoping it's more clear than yesterday. Yesterday was a slog. It was tough. The brush is pretty tough. It's tough to I navigate. I tornado. Yeah, yeah. Because blame. the tornado would have probably taken time away from clearing the brush. True. So thank, we're coming out to the tornado area today, so which has been recently cleared. So. Yes, thank you, volunteers. Yes, thank you. Appreciate you. Okay, we're off back on the trail. Airway Portage. There's more stairs. Look at that. All the way down to the lake. Thank you, volunteers. Well, they made it to the bottom. Uh, that was some walk down the stairs. That was uh, pretty cool. Now we just have to go up. We're going to count them on our way up. But there's somebody's canoe. Somebody's actually around here, maybe portaging. And uh, we're going to stop at this beautiful lake, get some water, probably change our socks. It is wet. Everything's wet this morning, soaking wet. So uh, no way to stay dry today. We're just gonna embrace it. See you at the next stop. 61, 62, 63, 64. Whew, that was 80 steps, followed by a whole bunch of rocks and roots to the top. That was, uh, it gets the heart pumping. Snake. Look at it. Hi, buddy. Hi. Startle it, please. No, I won't. Bye. Have a good day. Have a good day. Keep going that direction. See ya. Come this way. Bye. We found some more brush. Our favorite. Not our favorite. It's kind of. I don't know if you can see this, but it's just kind of like branches in your face. <laughs> Makes for some slow hiking. But there's thimbleberries. Hmm, berries. Quick stop at Rose Lake to do a little foot repair and use a latrine. This site is has a really nice breeze. And there's the lake, and it's up high on a bluff. So. Uh, the bugs aren't too bad here, I think, because the breeze comes through. But uh, that way is the trail, and there's a nice blue flag leading the way. We love portage trails. Portage trails are like sidewalks compared to the rest of the trail. And it gives the feet a little break, and the mind, too, because you're not having to focus so much on not tripping over things. But it is nice. We're currently on the Long Portage Trail. Hey, goat. Did you call the canoeber? I, I, I did, and they stood us up. Man. Guess we have to walk it. So what you're looking at here is a water crossing that goes all the way to that spot over there. I think that's where we're going. But we were told that you got to walk through this. So we're doing it. See you on the other side. Wish us luck. For me, it was knee deep. Uh, for the goat, it was a little higher than knee deep, but it wasn't bad. And the water's pretty clear and there's a little gravelly bottom. And uh, we're gonna go get ready to keep hiking down the trail. Whew. Well, it took us a little bit to get ourselves back together here, but we're Heading back on the trail, and the goat is pointing at the part you should walk on. Now point at the part that you should not walk on. <laughs> yes. See that little opening? That's the right way. Don't go the other way. You might go swimming. Uh, Take as close to the side as you can. Yeah. A couple other thoughts. Crocs for the win. Worth every ounce, 10 ounces of multi-purpose joy. And a uh, canoe does not work here. No service, no right. no canoe service. Um, you gotta hoof it if you wanna get to the other side. All right, now we're gonna hike and quit goofing around. So 
So much for dry feet. Here we go. You just have to go get in and walk through it. We tried going around, but there's really no way. So, at least it's kind of clean. I mean, look. Wow, I thought this was going to be muck fest. Not bad. It's a shoe wash. Oh my gosh. This is a long walk. Yeah. We found a big down tree. Oh, look at her. She just... I was like doing the army man crawl Being trying to five, get through there. Being 5'5 five five has its advantages. Seriously. Rarely, but this is a rare opportunity. That was like a tunnel of pokey sticks. That was a big climb. Now we're overlooking Watop Lake. The trail is in actually really great condition in this section. Um, it's just a lot of up and down. So getting a little winded. The sun came out, but a uh, beautiful view up here, Watop Lake. Well, it looks like we found the tornado area. This is pretty, um, be careful through here. Lots of trees down. And uh, we just climbed over a couple of them. But uh, there was a tornado that came through here. Did it come through last year? Yeah. Last year. And the crews have been out uh, doing a great job of clearing this out. We read the trail reports. And uh, we really appreciate that, but it looks like things are still kind of a mess around here. Wow, look at this. So much work. Thank you, volunteers. All of this would have been impassable after that tornado. This whole section, I don't know if you can really grasp how many trees are downed and how much work has been done. It's my understanding that, you know, this all has to be done with hand tools, not chainsaws. We were just talking about whether or not this was all done by hand. But we're so grateful for the volunteers that have made this way passable. Phew, so thankful. There's more just showing the damage and the, also the maintenance that has happened. But look at the, look at all these trees that have just been lopped off. I don't know if you can see that, but trees down everywhere. Well, good morning. We just had a really great uh, experience at uh, Clearwater East campsite. We had uh, kind of a long day yesterday due to blowdowns and beaver dams and all the things. We had almost 12 hours on the trail, which is more than we had planned uh, in order to get to our next spot. So we were feeling pretty worn out and we came to camp and found a big camp set up with a tarp and coolers and propane tanks and thought, oh, and no people. And uh, ended up meeting the nicest guys, Carl and Jeff. They made us dinner. They made us breakfast. We had great took stories. Garbage. Took our garbage. Gave us water. Gave us water. Super Maybe great. Coffee. Oh, coffee. Coffee, hot coffee. Oh my gosh, they were so great. So you just never know who you're gonna meet on the trail. Yeah. Here's another. Another great look at the Border Road Trail. Look at how clear that water is. This, this is some serious hiker fashion happening right here. I kind of have Princess Leia buns. Okay, so don't be like us and take the spur to go give it, Lake. Uh, do this and hike oh, the trail to this beautiful Waterfall, look at that. What's happening right now, goat? <laughs> I'm trying to get underneath this tree. Am I clear? You're clear. <laughs> you you did that better than I did. Uh, Boy, that one was a pokey beast. <laughs> did it get you? Mine it stabbed me. No, it didn't stab me, but I there was there was a rock and then a dip and I just went 
Thank you did first. great. Whew. That last section was really tough. We've said that, and I don't want anybody to not hike this trail, but it's just nonstop um, brush and like in your face, just in your face. Not like, just <laughs> like, a lot of work uh, with little reward. Yeah. No water stops. <laughs> no water stops. And we almost didn't make it to our break. And, uh, but we did make it and we are at this beautiful lake and I just went and dunked my head and cooled off. It was just, I've had, I think three liters of water today. I could have easily had four, maybe even five, just a uh, sweat fest down here. We met a couple other hikers um, that were uh, doing the trail. So we've seen three backpackers so far. Um, and uh, but yeah, the trail has been pretty easy to follow for the most part, except around down trees, but we're not seeing any signage. I think we come out of the wilderness tomorrow. We're still in the wilderness area. And um, this is what, uh, we're taking a little lunch break, and that is what the lake looks like. It's gorgeous. All right, we are refreshed, refueled, rehydrated, cleaned up, and ready for the final four. <laughs> the final countdown. You know, four miles here feels like eight miles. So, I mean, yeah. I'm not going to complain about it. We knew what we were getting ourselves into, but we're getting ready to go up a portage that literally goes straight up a hill. You can't see that, but it goes up to there. And so we got to get back to the top. See you at the top. Lots of this in this section. Climbing over big downed trees. There's the trail. Woo. We're about two miles away from McFarland, the campsite we're staying at tonight. And this little section is uh, kind of like a jungle gym. We got some fresh trees that have fallen down, some pines. So all the branches sticking out and climbing through and going around and up and over. So if you go this section and no one's cleared it out yet, just uh, heads up. It's a jungle gym. Woo, we made it to the top. We still have a uh, ways to go before we get to camp, but look at this beautiful overlook. Ah, oh, it's breezy. It's been buggy and muggy in the woods and it feels really good to get some fresh air up here. We are now leaving the wilderness. FYI, there are no hang gliders, bicycles, or motorized vehicles allowed. So goodbye wilderness. Hello, civilization. So we're on the road walk into camp. And um, yeah, it just feels so funny to be on a flat surface with nothing brushing against my legs or my face. Or <laughs> we're even kind of wobbly. You know how when you're in a canoe or a boat all day and you get out and you still feel the waves? It's kind of like that. Whew. Civilization. Well, it's day five, and we are hustling out of the McFarland campsite. Uh, as I said, it was uh, it's a national forest campground. It's at the time of filming this. It's twelve dollars a night. There's no shower. There is an outhouse, uh, and finding the trailhead was a challenge. So we're getting a little bit later start this morning, but we planned on hitting the trail at six o'clock uh, to get to the shuttle by one. We have about twelve miles. And as you can see, it's raining. So probably won't have a whole lot of video today, but we just need to get to the end. And the forest is actually really pretty. And uh, hiking in the rain isn't bad, but it's gonna be a long day. <laughs> We're starting to see blue blazes, signs of civilization. But we're still walking through this stuff. It's like a car wash. So this is all wet. And this is what the trail looks like here and sometimes there is there are branches that wash your face and your head too it's just a green tunnel it's non-stop we're drenched <laughs> but hey we're clean still on the trail <sighs> we made it Yes, 270 overlook.
we ran up that hill. So we got a shuttle to catch. <laughs> Woo. Here it is. Well, we just signed the guest book. Guest book? Trail register. <laughs> it's the guest book. It's like a party. And uh, took a fit photo at the top, and we're getting ready to go see Harriet for a ride home. Whew, that was a hike. All right, let's go. One mile left. We did it. False alarm. We aren't done. <laughs> Feels good to be back on the old SHT. Uh, <laughs> we're not actually done with the trail, but that was the 270 degree overlook, which was really cool. And, uh, but yeah, we're back on the SHT and it feels really good. Both of us have hiked the whole Superior Hiking Trail and uh, it was kind of a special moment to connect those two trails and uh, make the arrowhead of Minnesota for the North Country Trail. So I'm gonna have a lot more to say about this than, you know, most of this video is just my thoughts on the trail while we're hiking, but um, I'll have a full trip report um, with my gear and uh, information that you need to know if you're gonna hike this trail. Um, but definitely check out the Border Route Association. You know, they're the authorities on it and the SHT. And uh, if you're up for a big challenge, <laughs> if you want a trail that will test your patience, your skill, your resilience, but also give you a look at a part of Minnesota that very few humans get a look at, totally worth it, totally worth it. Uh, <laughs> We would also recommend doing it in six, seven, eight days instead of five. <laughs> that would make for a little more time at camp. Um, but hey, no regrets. We did it and uh, we can't wait to get to town to get a shower, some good food, and see our friend Harriet. Thanks for watching and hope you uh, have happy trails. Bye. Wolves and all kinds of critters. Live, love, laugh.